What's going on, everybody? I hope you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in. Maximum Impact with Jay Cameron back in the studio here in the DMV. But I'm going to be bringing to you a whole lot of uh, videos and content that I've had the opportunity to connect with and lock into uh, when I was over in uh, in Ghana, in Tanzania, a lot of different places. So I'm going to be bringing you that quite regularly. But, uh, but I want to uh, tell you about this couple I met. Over Jerk Soul, my man Judah, um, I, doing this thing at Jerk Soul. Make sure you stop by there when you're in Ghana. But I had a chance to connect uh, with this couple, the Schaefers, the Schaefers, and they are a duo, a musical duo. They up and moved from the U.S., got their ticket, packed up their bags, and they left. And they are now living their best lives in Accra, Ghana. I had a chance to talk to them. And let me tell you something. Make sure that you watch this interview all the way through because they drop some gems you're not going to expect. <laughs> we start talking about, uh, you know, brother man talking, rivals and all of that kind of stuff. But it gets deep. And all you know how it always says, wait for it. Well, that's what I want you to do. So, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the musical duo of the Schaefers. What's going on, everybody? Back here in a Ghana at Jerk Soul. And I'm telling you, these two people right here, I came here for brunch last week and I started hearing all of these songs that were familiar and, and had the, the riffs and the vibe and everything. I said, wait a minute, what's going on? And so I took a look outside and I saw the Shapers. Uh, and they were out there bringing all the hits, all the, all the hits from our era, from our yeah, generation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So wait a minute, you all are originally from where? Well, we're originally from Texas. 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 Uh -huh. Texas. 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 Texas, Charlie. <laughs> Texas. What, what part of Texas? Dallas. Born and raised for me in Sulphur Springs for my wife. So you like the Cowboys. Hey, listen, man, it was born and bred. It, oh. it runs through my blood. Oh. It runs through my blood, oh. Charlie. See, this, you listen, know, it is you know, what it in is, DC, man. You know, DC I, is. I know, I know. Uh, we we've always, always talk about this. Yeah, right? yeah, we've always had that type of situation, but it is what so, it is. Bro. Have you been to a game? Yeah. Okay, you've been, oh, I mean, yeah. I've been games. to a Cowboys game. Yes. Have you been to a Cowboys, formerly the football team formerly known as Redskins game? I've never game? been to a Cowboys Redskins game. I've really? been to a Cowboys Eagles game. Okay. And I've been to a Cowboys Dolphins game. Okay. And I've been to a few Thanksgiving games, but I've never been never to, been to the game. Redskins oh, game. All right. Yeah. Now the Commanders. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, no, I ain't really wanted to go to a Redskins. I mean, I know. It's a, I know it's a good good battle. I just was like, you know, I watch this one on TV. <laughs> well, look, let me tell you, this it, it was so nice to see both yeah. of you and to hear both of you. Yeah, thank you. So man. why are you here in Accra, Ghana? Ah, uh, baby, you want to answer? Yeah. Well, we're here, man, to just work and and get away from America, honestly. Okay. We're, we're here to to move and, and, and help getting the country continent moving forward in the best way we know how. Uh, we're musicians, and so our specialty is is uh, raising musicians to become better musicians, okay. giving them good stage experience, giving them that opportunity to you know um, share their new music with the world and okay. and different uh, types of things like that. So so we're very interested in helping the musicians come along, and also we wanted to be on this continent because of a new start. We wanted to get away from America, and and we wanted to live our life over here. We was recently married for about seven years now. Well, we've been together seven years. Okay. Got to be married for six or five. So. Okay, you get it right now. Yeah, get it right. It, it, it seems like it's already forever. You know what I'm saying? When you having such a good ride, it's, it's, we've married seven years. So, so married seven years. Yeah. So the number is seven. The number is seven. The number is seven. Okay. The number is seven. So seven years, you were living in in Texas. Uh huh. And is it, when was your first time on the continent? Well, seven years we were living in, when we got married, we met in Atlanta, Atlanta Georgia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was living in Atlanta. I, I graduated from high school and I moved to Houston. And then I moved up to Atlanta to continue my musical right. career. Okay. And when I moved to Atlanta, I was in Atlanta when I met my wife. And my wife came to Atlanta about two years in, and that's when we met each other. So from Atlanta, we went back to Texas and now we're here. So what part of Atlanta did you live in? I was in uh, Union City. Oh, Union City. Okay, yeah. that's down on like 75. Yeah, that's right outside of, that's yeah. right outside of Atlanta. But right. I lived in Union City, but I frequented the city a lot because I'm, I was a drummer in the city. So I Got did a you. lot so of the work. Musical, yeah. yeah, I, I used to live in Atlanta. Cafe, yeah. Cats Cafe, okay. 
uh, Cafe 290 before all that, before it closed down, those were my 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 normal stumping grounds. Okay, see, when I was there, it was long before those even came. Uh, so, so we're going okay. back into the early 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. When when you had places like uh, Dominique's. Uh, okay. So I've Dominique, actually heard of Dominique. Dominique Wilkins. Yeah. When he had his spot. Right. Yeah. And in the Omni used to be there. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, the Omni, yeah. And the Fulton County Stadium used to be there. Yeah. So, that's, so yeah. anyway, I know they're like, well, what does that have to do with Ghana? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember this one. We're doing some Pete Rock and CL Smooth out here. So, all right, so you came here because you wanted to do music. Yeah. And how did you get started once you got here? Well, it's just about building relationships. And it's more than music. It's, yeah. we, we were really called to come here yeah. from the ancestors. We were answering the ancestral call to come away from America, to come into this land that we were taken from as our slave, as our ancestors were taken from in the, during the slave trades. So we've actually come back here to live a life that we never knew about. Hmm. So it, it was, it's all, it's all, music was the gift that was given to us right. in order to help push this continent forward. Right. So we're using this gift that was given to us us in the best way that we know how to continue doing what we were doing in the states to help make the states what the states were now we're here doing the same thing to make the continent what we know the continent exactly. should be all right so what has the transition been like well um it's an experience okay okay just like any place though you know even when i moved from dallas to atlanta for me that was a, a big experience because i came from a part where you know, I grew up as the only colored person mm. in my class. Mm. <laughs> so, um, but as an adult, I, you know, I went into music and things like that and started having, you know, other uh, uh, cultures even mixed. But just going to Atlanta was a, a culture shock. shock. Really? So Coming me, from, from Texas to Atlanta is a culture from shock? From Texas to Atlanta is a culture shock. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Texas is more mingled and mixed than I saw in Atlanta. Like Atlanta was like Ghana. Really? Me. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, so I was like, if I can. That you was know, local Atlanta then. I mean, yeah, local Atlanta. Okay, okay, local Atlanta. Just straight okay. black. Yes, that's you know what I'm local, saying? Okay. And I love my black people. Yeah, I got you. But coming to Ghana, I was like, okay, I survived Atlanta. I yeah. know I can survive Ghana. Because this is chocolate country. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> they call it, what this used to be called chocolate city. Uh -huh. this, chocolate and West country. Africa is chocolate. Right. Just chocolate, yeah. even the cocoa is this right, right. brown. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you were in Atlanta, you had the culture shock. So coming here, what was the culture shock? Or what has it been like? Oh, wow. Now, this question is kind of, it may be, may ruffle some feathers. Hey, but that's what we do here. You know, when I got here, I cried first because I was glad to All be right, So the transition here, what has that been like? So a culture shock for me, um, for us. Was it for you, honey? Well, I would say a little bit, but not, not too so much, much like I me. Came, yeah, I, I grew up in the black school. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. You, got got you. you know what I'm saying? So it that's true, that's true. He grew up in Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and Oak Cliff and there, right? Oak Cliff. Yeah. yeah. South Dallas. <laughs> Dallas, South Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, um, stepping off the plane, um, I was very emotional, but the first thing I saw was a white Jesus on the back of a troll. Oh, yeah. A troll oh, is my, the my, public my. transportation, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm not too big to ride a troll, because when we first got here, we did not have a car, okay? And we rode the troll. But what just bothered me... Yeah, I can just go ahead and ruffle them feathers. That's, that's not all I talk about. <laughs> was I looked in front of us, I looked to the side of us, uh, and I looked behind us, yeah. and everywhere I looked, there was a white Jesus. Yeah, that's a problem. I can't get with it. And I'm just telling you that only because um, once upon a time, we were there. We were in that mind frame. I was. I, I, I was. I'm listening. This is getting good. <laughs> I, I thought we talked about music. We about to go deep right here. <laughs> I, was, I was born and raised, um, like I told you, in a town where in my kindergarten class, I was the only black all the way up to fifth grade. Okay. Okay. Um, and we've come out of that since then. We, we've been searching for truth now. And that's another reason we ended up here in Ghana, on the motherland, period. Because when now. you start searching for truth, the real, the yeah. real, yeah. <laughs> you start finding things out. You know, some things you might not want to know and some things you've been searching for and that will be revealed to you. So that's really 
you know, what that shock was for me. You know, I'm looking at all of my beautiful, I'm talking about all this brown melanin naturally, everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Naturally beautiful people um, worshiping yeah. white Jesus. Now, I did grow up, and, and my dad will still tell me today. So, dad, if you're watching, don't be mad. But what I am saying is, it doesn't matter the color is what I was taught, but it does. Mm. The color matters. Break it down. The reason the color matters for me, especially coming from a town where I saw mostly white, the only black was my family, um, it matters to know that someone that I'm worshiping, I can connect with. Right. He looks like me. She looks like me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that, that never happened. And I, you know, I'm praying for, for Ghana and the whole of Africa. Well, I was going to say it's everywhere. It's not just in Ghana. <laughs> yeah, it's in whole, Tanzania. It is. It's everywhere. It Egypt. Is, it is. Everywhere. It is. And that's why we're all here. Right. That's, that's another reason we're here because truths have to be made and we are our ancestors. Right. They are trying to tell everybody this through us. Right. right. <laughs> that's the truth. I mean, yeah. and I'm glad you mentioned that because that was the thing that hit me the first time I yeah. came. I said, hold on. I looked. I said, wait a minute. I said, why is he here? Right. And all of this melanin, yeah. how did he slip in here? How? And then from there, I said, and it started unpacking things. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, we've been slipping back. Oh, oh, right. this. We've been hit, we've been hit yeah. with it. Yeah, bamboos. And, 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 and that's the part for a lot of people watching they they're like well what's the big deal right is when you come here and you see it there you go in america you expect it exactly right. you know florida evans you expected to see that episode uh -huh. of good time yeah. with, with michael oh, yeah. you, right. you expected to see it like what, what, what we got going on here he even knew back then even right. norman lear even norman lear knew that, that something was off it's but true. but coming here it's like that's the last thing you would expect exactly. to see and to see how entrenched it is. Entrenched. And if you even try to say something, people oh. are like, no, you don't understand. Go back, you don't right. understand. Yeah. Right. And it's right. like, if that's your deity that you're following, right. and that deity has been imposed upon you historically, you're, you're gonna, it's gonna, you, you'll never advance. Yeah, I mean, that's really the bottom line. You'll never advance following a white Jesus. That's, that's, that's true. The, that is that, true. That is, that is true. I mean, that's the truth. It's, it's, and that's the thing that, and people can't even separate anyway. That, that's a whole other conversation. Listen, and we'll have it with I, you. I know, trust me. Yeah. But, but that's what I'm finding. A lot of people are recognizing when they come, we have an expectation, and then, bam. Yeah. But it's a good bam because now it causes us to dig deeper. It's we would have never even been thinking it's like true. this. Exactly. We'd have been thinking, oh, well, you know, in Africa, they do this, that, and the other. Yeah. Now we understand how deep this thing goes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And we see what we need to do to help bring us out of it. Yes. Because if we don't, if we if we stay in America and never come over here and work hard to change the narrative, then they will always continue to think the way that the colonizers have embedded in them to think. Sure. So it's very necessary for us to come over here, get hit in the face, and say, okay, we really got to wake up because we got a lot of work to do with within our own people, within our own communities on this country. Yeah. Well, in I'll this tell you, continent. I'll tell you like this: somebody need to go tell Smokey Robinson. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Smokey Robinson, he did a whole poem about how he basically has resentment towards Africa and he doesn't consider himself African. Uh, there are several. There's several. Our family. Bro. Really? Yes. Yeah. Mr. J. Cameron. Uh-oh. Yes. <laughs> Our entire, I want to say, I'm going to say mine. I'm okay. not going to say Charles's family. Mm. I, Charles, look, look, he's looking <laughs> off in the space. <laughs> I'm, I'm bringing my family to the mind. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have had an ancestry things done mm -hmm. before we did the African ancestry. And of course, like I actually saw a picture of my great great grandma mm -hmm. who yeah. was an actual Indian. Right. Got it. Cold black hair, as long as this ponytail. Got it, got it, got okay. it. And I get that part, but the beginning of everything yeah. matters, okay? Origins, Everybody right. had to uh, disperse yeah. from this hilly place, right. okay? Um, and that is the thing, like my people, my family, a lot that I've spoken with, they don't want to be connected. At all. At all. And missing In out. In fact, I was said, said to me, and I won't say exactly who it is, why are you asking me about African roots? We already know that we're Indian or native. But if you don't know who you are, know thyself man and woman. If you don't know who you are, you will never 
you you have this fabricated life right now. You know, I had it too. I was a pester. Oh, oh, oh Lord, we bought Lord have mercy. Oh Lord, yeah. Yeah. oh my, my, my. We don't walk. We don't walk. We don't walk. No, we don't say too much. No. Once <laughs> upon a time. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> now, <laughs> we won't talk about music and look what we done walked into right there. So. <laughs> but, spirit, but spirit doesn't change. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's why I can loosely say that spirit never changes. Right. Even when I was worshiping Jesus. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, it was the spirit within me and the ideal of why we even worship him. Hmm. Okay, it's the idea of worshiping, uh, what he stood for, the Christ consciousness, and in comedic language, because we, we study comedic. Okay. Okay, Christ consciousness. Ah, gotcha. And that's what we call that now. So, okay, now, all right. So, you, you, we're going to walk through. <laughs> so, are you still a pastor? Well, you never stop. The, the, being the, that call. Right, the, oh, got you. Okay. You never stop. So, that. meaning, so do you still have a church? Or? No, no, no. Okay. okay. No, we don't have a church. We do have people who still call. We counsel. Okay. This and that. Uh, but, you know, that's what pastorship is to me anyway. Basically, shepherding. Yeah, so. shepherding. It's not being behind a pulpit. It, it never has been that. So, are you, were you in the ministry as well? I was the drummer for the ministry. <laughs> ah. And then when I met my wife, that's when I became and more so in the forefront of the ministry. Okay. So, for the longest, I was just really behind the drums. While everybody's shouting and singing in the choir, <laughs> I was the drummer. So, you were the Yep. Yep. All, yep. That's oh. me. In the game. That's me. That's me. So, you kept the rhythm. I kept the rhythm. Yeah. I kept the tempo. I made you shout. I made you worship. All that other good stuff. Uh, that that energy that you felt like. Whoa, yeah. what was that? Yeah. yeah. I hit my floor time. It's, it's oh, okay. Boom. Yeah. You okay. Know what I'm okay. So, okay. But um, I didn't step into the forefront of leadership and pastorship till I met my wife. Okay. Once I met my wife, that's when we started leading the youth group. Um, I was doing some individual things like going to schools and things like that yeah. when I was working. I, I wasn't didn't really want to be so, so much in the pulpit. My you. dad's a pastor, so I was always say, I'll leave that to my daddy, I'll play drums, and I'll, I I'll you. do my whole thing, but I, understand. I really didn't want to be in the pulpit like that, just because I felt I knew where my gift was. So, I, I understand. But I did go out and teach children, I did go out and inspire children, I fed the hungry, I did all that stuff, because mm -hmm. I, I, I knew we didn't need to be in a church building to actually show or be the example of a Christ-like or what we know to be Christ-like then, a Christ-like yeah. spirit. Right. So I took that approach. This is such an interesting conversation because I thought we were going to talk about music, y'all. Y'all don't need, this is totally un... Music I didn't even know we were... takes us all around. It takes us through every conversation. It, it really does. does. Because it's, 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 all, it's a spiritual aspect of it. Exactly. Music is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so we can't talk about music without talking about, okay, where did you even get... The, the 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 spirit to do music from well you know that came from the divine okay did you start in church well it's uh, all gonna it right. all just kind of yeah. ties into it's each true. other because we are a spiritual being so we can't never have a conversation especially about music without tying it back into okay we actually came from the divine and we are here for a purpose and being in the forefront of people we know that we have a huge responsibility to lead people in the right way right. in the right direction wow this uh, well what would you say for, because of your background within the church, um, what do you think West Africa, and we'll just say Africa as a whole, mm -hmm. what do you think it needs in order to break free from the imperial colonized mm -hmm. uh, wow. religious system that has been imposed upon it, that has been interpreted for it, that has been, um, even you just had the, the Pope of the Catholic Church mm -hmm. apologize to the indigenous people yeah. in, uh, in Canada mm -hmm. yeah. for forcibly mm -hmm. converting them into Catholicism yeah. Yeah. And, and basically demonizing Which is Christianity. Yeah. And, and yeah. so what they did was demonize everything that came that the indigenous had. Right. Yeah. So what how, how do you get through to people to show them what has happened here? Because I see wherever I see extreme poverty, mm -hmm. I see that exactly. right beside it. Yeah. I see. Yeah. yeah, right. It's true. It's true. Well, to me, you know, it's it's all about the heritage. Period. You know, when when we left our heritage, it made us weak. Mm. That was the weak point right there. Because even talking to some of the people in the village that we live in, um, uh, they are still they're traditional. They they do their traditional gods. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you go across the street, their church is loud and. Yeah. All get out. 
you know so that the heritage has to come back to the people you have to recognize where you come from first of all to, to me that is the only way that you can know who you are and where you come from now we actually even have a, a friend that he's a rapper here in Ghana okay. and he actually is afraid to do traditional libation and oh because they, because they've deemed it as witchcraft yeah and, they and deem it as witchcraft you know which even I used to preach against no, I I <laughs> you witchcraft you know I understand. But, but when but coming out of that ignorance because I'm calling myself ignorant at that time and seeking for the truth and not just what people are telling you mm. when you learn about what witch or wisdom which means wisdom and people don't know that that's not a bad thing oh there sure. are dark and there's there's dark and there's light okay we always want to always follow the light that's mm. what we call the heavenly way got it okay um we don't want to get into the dark side you know but then again there are people who are actually righteous people who use the dark side of witchcraft to you know ward off well, well i mean what you're talking about the ones that oftentimes say that they're holy and righteous as we're discovering like the catholics and all of that yeah you know, they're the ones who were stealing stealing killing and destroying exactly and and they were doing this in the name of white jesus uh -huh. or whatever they were doing mm -hmm. and they're saying that they're the ones that are holy and righteous and everybody should follow them yeah but they're the ones doing the very thing that they're telling everybody not to do yeah so it's like the hypocrisy well it's been turned around that's the thing you know ever since day one we would still have our heritage as one if they didn't come in and hand us the bible after beating it mm. into us okay the slave castle changed my life yeah it's something to see and it ticked me off yes it did yes it will it ticked me off to see that those blood stains were there to see that the the thesis stains mm -hmm. those you know the original yeah they're still there yeah when i went in there it's like i felt them crying still to us or actually welcoming not not even a a cry of sadness but like joy you're back mm. do this now wow yeah this so is the, the door of no return for us is the door of no return but a lot of people will not go to the door of no return they will not go to the dungeons they will say i don't need to see that it is i don't want that i don't want to and i know for me when i saw it it literally it was like, oh, the intention was that I never come back. Yeah. Or the descendants of those people who passed yeah. through that never come back. I said, well, we're back. Yeah, we're back. And that's what we're I'm back. saying. We're the back. door of no return for us now is yeah. the door of no return. Back to those places. That's right. That's oh, what got I'm you. Got about. you. So so you all are here. We're this here. Is, this is it. This we're is here. we bought it one way. They bought a one way ticket. One way ticket. So when were you concerned? Were, were, <laughs> 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 a one -way ticket. were you concerned when you bought the one way? You just knew. We're Musician. music again. Yeah. Music, okay. The music. We've been touring our whole yeah. life, okay, so you knew. playing for artists. So we're not we're not strangers to moving exactly. at the drop of a dime. We're not we're not strangers to saying okay. Musicians. Yeah. So we we're used to traveling. We're always we've always traveled. So us moving is nothing to to scare us. It actually excites us and it inspires us because now we have another place, a new place, and some new eyes to look forward to to be able to give them the music that they have never heard before yeah. and for us to learn music that we've never heard before we're now learning new music that we've never played before in different languages that we've yeah. never spoken okay. before yeah. so things are kind of it's it, and it's necessary because if we want a unified continent music is the number one thing that speaks to everybody it, it speaks to everybody and i believe that a unified continent can only be unified when music is at the forefront because music has always ushered us into that big moment it's true. so the music has to be on one accord with the whole continent in order for the continent to even experience that major change because it's it's going to be a big sight to see and music is going to have to usher us into that so we're here for the event and we're actually here to plan it because it's going to happen <laughs> Well, you know, the good part about what I'm hearing you say is the, the dilemma a lot of people say if you're going to have a unified Africa, what language is everyone right. going to speak? Uh-huh, right. But what you just said and referencing the music, that's a language. Yeah, it is. Even it with is. the different influences, mm -hmm. yes. that's something that transcends cultures. Yeah. And it's something that I've watched, you know, music from South Africa, yeah. mm -hmm. music from Nigeria, music yeah. from Ghana. Yeah. They all have their own flavor. Yeah. 
and it transcends that it does block. it does so what okay so you're you're here doing music full time right mm -hmm. okay what type of music and do you have a full band set up How, what's the breakdown so right now we have a we just have our duo we are a duo okay so we're a husband and wife duo the shapers. the shapers we are a husband and wife duo but we do have a piano player and a guitar player that we call often when they are available to help us out so we do give them that opportunity to come in and learn some new songs we uh, schedule rehearsals with them because they like to know they like to come in and say i've never played this song before but i listen to it all the time and now i have the opportunity to perform it Right. Hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so they get excited because they say I've never had the opportunity to perform these songs that we listen to a lot of times. So what we do is we, we give them that opportunity to right. learn new learn new uh, vibes, learn new rhythms, uh, learn new lyrics, learn new chords on the guitar, on the keyboards. Okay. It just yeah. kind of opens their mind when they say, oh, I can play this chord. Well, I've never played this right. chord before because I've always been used to just playing this chord yeah. and this chord. Right. But when I play this chord, it kind of opened up my mind. And then they'll look at us and say, well, thank you. From yeah, well, uh -huh, yeah. yeah, well, well, well not even, yeah, not yeah. even just gospel, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Elbows out, mm -hmm. yeah, elbows out, out. Doc. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we, uh, yeah. we do have a, 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 some musicians that we have with us, okay. but we are still seeking to. We want to build us a good big band. Yeah, yeah right we, we had a big band in the states. It, it is just us right now. Um, we're, I produce. No, but y'all sound know. great. Yeah, yeah I mean, we're. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Medasha Pa. Medasha Pa. Thank right. you, Thank you, bro. I heard you singing <laughs> with me. I heard you singing. Yeah. I did I hear some Shanice out there. Yeah, yeah. Shanice. Yeah. Like, we sing it out. We do, yeah. it, all. We do it all. We do it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we do the program the keyboard, program the guitar. Yeah. A lot of times when you're hearing that full sound, we're at home programming. You know, to get Laying that full. Track, yeah. Making it tight. Yeah. Well, that's what that duo do for you too. Yeah. Yeah, you know? making it work. Well, mm -hmm. let me say this. Um, where can, if someone comes to Ghana, mm -hmm. how can they find you if they are planning an event or those who are in Ghana and they want to have you for an event? Because mm -hmm. okay. that, that's, I, I, what you're saying resonates. I know we talked about, you know, like the, the spiritual side and all mm -hmm. of that, but people want to connect with like real people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they yeah. want to know, and they've heard your heart. Yeah. yeah. So how can they connect with you to be able to have this experience like that? Well, you can reach out to us on our Facebook is the Schaefer's, well, Charles and Kenya Schaefer okay. on our Facebook. And then we do have a the Schaefer's page. So it's C-H-A-F-F-E-R-S. If you just type in C-H-A, yeah, yeah, if you just type in C-H-A-F-F-E-R, you'll find us on Facebook. You'll find us on Instagram and you'll find us on YouTube. Also, we have a few of, of the shows that we've done on YouTube. So you'll be able to find us on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. All right, so mm -hmm. what, in, in closing, what message would you like to leave with everyone? We've talked about a lot. What can they take away from this conversation? You want to go? Go ahead. Okay, well, I'll tell you to come home. Don't be afraid to come home. Um, it's not easy. No, it's not easy. But we didn't make it easy in America either. But it's so much better here because you'll appreciate the growth. You'll appreciate the time that you put in and you appreciate the people that are appreciative of you for even taking out the time to care about care enough about them to come back and feed into them what we know right. what they have not had the opportunity to know so come home with your knowledge come home with your inspiration um, skills. skills and come home to jerk soul and come home to the uh, African ancestral It's so much to yeah. see here it's so much to do here um, but this land cannot move forward without us mm. we are a part of region six whatever and and if we don't even know much about region six region six is just that the, that makes what we call the diaspora legitimized in a constitutional way yes. mm. so the only thing we're missing as a diaspora is our land and the president, and the president. <laughs> but we are a legit region on this land right. constitutionalized so what i'm encouraging all of the diaspora to do is Take being a diaspora serious and come home because there are things it may not be in place now, but 
is moving towards that direction. They're working some things out to make sure that we get the things that we need to make us and our lives better so that we can continue contributing to this land the way we need to <laughs> as the diaspora. All right, well, you heard it from the Shapers. Hey, did you have something? I'm good, yeah, that's you, it. You heard it from the Shapers? And so you know where to find them. We're gonna put all of their information below and I'm telling you, you wanna catch them live. That's the bottom line, catch them live. And if you have a chance to talk to them in person, they're here at Jerk Soul on a regular basis. Yeah. Every Thursday and Sunday. Every Thursday and Sunday right here at Jerk Soul. If you're in uh, a part of the uh, African diaspora abroad, follow them on their social media platform. Shoot them any questions that you might have. And if you're afraid to come, if you are afraid to come, don't be afraid to come. Don't be afraid. There's peace. I'm telling yeah. you, it's not perfection. If that's what you're looking for, you'll never find it. But if you're no. looking for peace, you see it on the people's faces. Yeah. You see it in the videos. If, if we were over here distressed and all of that, then that would be the story. But you see too many people at peace right. enjoying their time right. here in Ghana and other parts of Africa. Right. So, that's true. All right, everyone. So until next time, make sure that you subscribe, like, share. Take care. Be safe. Yeah. All right, you heard them. You heard them, the Schaefers. So glad to be able to talk to them at Jerk Soul. Jerk Soul in Accra, Ghana. I'm in the DMV right now, but I'm looking forward to getting back to the continent of Africa real soon and leading a lot of people there. And uh, I want you to watch this clip because as you're subscribing, you're liking and you're sharing, this is much more. This is about bridging the gap. And when I say bridging the gap, I want you to, uh, to really, really pay attention to uh, what this next clip I'm going to share with you is saying because uh, my respect is for those on the continent as well as those who are part of the, the um, African diaspora and recognizing that we all have equal contributions towards one another. And uh, the whole game plan was for us to be divided and to be arguing and to be to get caught up in superiority, who's better and who's not as good and having, having those type of petty arguments the children have, uh, there are another group of people who are recognizing the collective power that we have if we learn to embrace uh, our, our cultural uh, differences, but really our cultural similarities. So check this out. I want to invite you to join me in Tanzania next year. Next year, I want you to join me in Tanzania because it's a special place as well. And uh, we have a whole host of places you can join us at MaximumImpactTravel.com. But take a look at this clip and see the power of what we're doing on the continent of Africa and in the African diaspora. I want to welcome everybody to Tanzania. Now, does everybody know the theme for this trip is to what? Relax and, and enjoy. enjoy. Right, so I think everybody can tell we're going to have a good time already. <laughs> Why the heat and the balloon will rise. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my head. And see us wonder mystery of an African adventure with staring in destiny. The, the relaxation, the peace that is here and compared to where I live is like, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Hold the first one. Well, I can't say I come from here, you know, but in my heart, this is it. Being able to see all of the nature, all of the animals, it's, it feels like I'm in a movie. It was a, a learning experience just to see, you know, what the country looks like, how beautiful it is, to see that it's not what they show you on TV. Um, it makes me want to see more of Africa, to learn more about Africa. Home, I had always done a lot of research on different parts of Africa. So I knew that some of the conceptions of Africa were not true. <laughs> we've seen it all. You hear me? Birds. We, we've seen grass. We've seen it all. It'll change you within. I mean, you, you need to see it. I mean, you have to come.
Well, hello. Hello? Where? <laughs> Good to see you. How you Last time I saw you, was in Ghana. If we can continue to find a way to bridge our differences and, you know, really, really, really come together, come to Africa, a lot of people really want to come here. This trip is not only a trip, but it really is an experience, and it's a learning experience. We've already learned so much just at the table, so I'm excited to be here, I'm, I'm glad to be here, and I can't wait to continue to learn and just be with all of y'all. I quite didn't want to come to Africa, okay? And when I came, I got here, they were so kind. And I like, oh my gracious, then I got to meet you guys, and y'all start telling me about the trip. And I said, okay, this is gonna be fun. So now, I'm kind of excited. My wife, my wife said, well, you ain't got no excitement, but now I'm looking forward. So, hey, I'm hoping one day I can have the same testimony as you guys, and I'm just glad to be here. our second Maximum Impact experience. And I've been singing your praises, Jay, hands down. If you want to go to Africa, you got to do with Jay. There's no other way, no other way. And to be honest with you, when Renee, Jeff, and James signed up for this, I'm like, we can't let y'all go without us. And so here we are. It's just the most interesting thing in the world to come to a place such as this. It's beautiful. I mean, this is a beautiful resort. Uh, you all seem like very wonderful people. We all have something in common. We're all connected. We you know, we all are connected. Um, this is my second trip with Maximum Impact. I was in Ghana, July last year. And I brought my daughters with me. And they had a pretty rough experience because they had a lot of expectations that weren't realistic. But it took them two weeks to decompress and then to understand fully the magic that had happened on that trip. This is my mom, Claudette. And I'm very grateful that she brought me here. This is her first trip with the group, but she's been um, to Africa like three times. <laughs> and again, I'm very grateful that she brought me here. This is my second trip, and I'm going to have a third, a fourth, and a fifth. And I tell you, I'm still excited about all the things that I'm experiencing. And you would think I've been to many countries, I traveled a lot, but I've never been to a country where people look like me. Everywhere I went, I always had to fit in. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, was kind of traumatic for me after coming here and receiving, being received the way I was. I'm just looking forward to the whole itinerary. You know, it looks really, uh, I know it's really well organized and looking forward to the whole thing. So glad to meet everybody and look forward to meeting in person and talking. Hi, my name is LaDonia. Um, these are my parents and I'm really excited to be here. I'm 21 years old and thank you for hosting this trip and bringing us all here. Hi, I'm Faith Vincent Lettle. These are my parents. Um, I'm from Akron as well. This is my college graduation gift. Kids, I got 18 grandkids and, and nine great grandkids, and all of them want to come because I was so excited. Thanks to Jay, I was so oh, look. I walked through the streets of Philadelphia, lifting up. <laughs> of Africa. You got to go. I said, if you're Afro-American, you write that down on whatever form, you need to go to Africa. Travel a lot, and over the last couple years, I really wanted to do a deep discovery of Africa, all the African countries, and I found Jay, and I said, that's the way I want to do it. So we are very, very uh, appreciative. This is my sister, Linda, and the reason I'm here is because Linda spoke so highly of the trip she was on in Ghana. Coming to Africa, I liked it. Something different. You can connect. Connecting with the people here, connecting with the workers here. I like that idea and that approach. So I wanted to come and see for myself.
I remember it was November 2020 when Mr. J. Cameron visited us. It, it was during COVID pandemic. Imagine we have 32 rooms, but he was accommodating only one guest who was J. Cameron. <laughs> Cameroon told me, I promise you, I'll bring you a group. Oh, well. yeah. okay. <laughs> so, on behalf of Airport Planet Lodge, we are here to express our sincere gratitude to host you here today. I can't imagine doing Africa without without um, being on a Maximum Impact Tour, because being with a group like this just adds so much more to it.